So hello folks, this is Garth at GW Leathercraft, and today I'm making a knife sheath. Actually, more specifically, a dangler knife sheath, and I'm making it for the SE4. So, in order to uh, make sheaths, you need a pattern, and... The way I make a pattern is I have the knife. It is, you know, almost impossible to make a good sheath and not have the knife. Uh, people ask me, can you make a sheath for this? And I say, well, send me the knife. And, you know, then I don't hear back from them. Uh, obviously, people don't want to send me the knife. I understand that. But that's the problem. That's what you're up against. Somebody could trace the blade make this uh, a line across here that would give me that part they could trace the handle they could tell me this the, the like the circumference of the part where the uh, uh, where the strap will go um, you know give me the thickness of the blade that would be about as good as you could do in an email or over the phone I still don't think it's adequate so I like to have the knife in my in my hands. Anyway, so what I try to do is I, I try to buy the odd knife along. And actually, right now, I just purchased these four. Uh, the SE3, the SE4, 5, and 6. Um, I'll eventually get whole, uh, sheaths for all of them. But right now, we're working on the SE4. Um, this is actually my third attempt at this video um, because I keep missing and, and not hitting record so that's a little bit extra annoying um, but anyway we're going to start again um, the first thing I'm going to do is is the um, make a pattern for the ferro rod holder now really you don't need a pattern but uh, just so you can visualize it, I'm going to do it. Now, uh, basically, it's a rectangle. Um, and I make it three inches long. Um, and inch and a half wide. And... The inch and a half way is really all that makes any difference, and even it doesn't make much. Um, the uh, the three inch is just extra long, so it can be trimmed afterwards. But if you was making a pattern, that would be it. And then, of course, you wet form it over the ferro rod uh, and in a press and squeeze this together where my thumb is onto the ferro rod, and then take and then when it's dry, you take the ferro rod out. And, and work with it after that, but that is the ferro rod holder. Uh, so now we want to start on the other pieces. The first thing I do is uh, my, um, or, or the welt. So I want a straight edge at the top. I let that overhang because you got the handle and you I want it to the blade to rest on the paper and I'm not worried about centering it because I've got extra basically I trace around it okay now with this knife uh, I, I as far as looking at it I would say that uh, it's no wider here than it is here but you have to watch that because you're going to want to put it in and draw it out. So it's not really this width that you're as concerned about as it is this width. It depends on the shape of the knife. Um, but I'm going to just relieve this back here just slightly. As you can see, 
uh, and that's more or less just in case there is some extra on that uh, belly. Now, from there, um, what I normally do, this is the outline of the knife. I normally allow a sixteenth all the way around between the knife and the weld. Uh, it probably, it isn't a measured amount, it just, and it probably varies some, but it's just to give it that little bit of clearance. And then I want three quarters of an inch uh, to the outside of the sheath. So that's 13 sixteenths from the mark that I have there now. And so those are the two marks. Now we square this up with our grid lines. And that is just about three inches, but for a total width, um, it's not uh, it's not really, you know, you're not going for any particular width. It's just what it is. But um, need the extra for the seam um, and the same on the bottom 13 now I'm going to trim those edges now of course this is not the only way to make a sheath. This is the way I'm making it. Um, you can add or take away anything to suit yourself. Um, there are certain things that are critical. You're probably going to need a welt. Um, you're probably going to need a space for a seam allowance. It doesn't have to be exactly what I am using. I'm just going to cut that across like that. Okay. Now, and the style that I make, uh, I use a, uh, I have a radius on this side, and I don't normally uh, measure the radius because it really doesn't matter. I just make something that looks decent. And a little tiny, well, I shouldn't say tiny, but a lot smaller radius right here on this corner. Uh, just because it looks better with a radius, I feel, in the point. All right. Now that is, uh, right the way that sits, that would be the front part of the sheath. Um, but we want, eventually that will be the weld. So what we're going to do now, just for the ease, we're going, before we cut that out, we're just going to trace around it. And once this is cut out, then we have our front piece. Now when I do this, I don't allow for any extra for sanding. Um, the problem with allowing for sanding with this sheath is you have to assemble it um, with the ferro rod in place and then sew it. So you've basically finished the sheath and then sand it. Well, the ferro rod loop is in the way for sanding it properly. Now you're going to want to sand it, but you can only take 
a minimal amount. So the, the, the important thing there is when you're gluing it and getting it ready is to be very careful about how you place the pieces together. If you're careful, then you won't miss the, the extra allowance. Now, like I said, a sixteenth of an inch. So, that is the welt pattern um, for an SE4 and the front piece pattern for an SE4. Okay, so those two are there. We have the, the pattern for the um, ferro rod loop. So the last thing is the pattern for the back piece. Um, so I have this center line already here so I'm just gonna use it. I just need to get over to the edge so I can square up the edge because I, I want to uh, the way I want to do it, I need a straight edge, and that'll give me one. want enough so that um, I don't run out of room on the end. So we're just going to do that and then we're going to do that. And I'm just bringing that, cutting that over a little so I can get at the edge of it and I just square everything up and mark a line. So that is the top, uh, corresponds to the top of the, you know, the um, thing here. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the center of this. And this is pretty well just three inches. So that's that. Probably a lot more ways to do it, but this is the way I do it quite often. So there's that, and then we just trace around it. And that gives us the, the um, bottom of it. Now, the next thing that we want to do So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the gusset and I'm going to mark basically two marks here and here, which is where the blade sits. And so that then I can, and I'm bringing the end of the handle because that's what's going to sit up against this leather edge. I'm bringing that right up to the edge and then I'm going to try to center it in in the opening. Now it's a little difficult where this uh, finger notch is, but um, I would say that that is pretty good. Now it's good, better for length anyway is really what it is. And then you want to mark where you want your strap. So if you're if you've got a three quarter inch strap somewhere like that, I would say. Uh, 
Um, yeah. So so that is the um, that is that. Now, what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to square this up again with the lines, and I'm going to mark this. I want the two not the two oblong punches to be three quarters of an inch apart. So I mark three eight from the center line and three eight from the center line. Okay. And you, you want to establish your your strap at this point because if you wait you may end up with a problem. You may end up with not having enough material um, to um, uh, and, and uh, you know a potential weak spot. And then let's see where is it? And then just center this on the center line. This is for the rivet to hold the strap in place. And that is that. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to straighten this line and extend it. For some reason, this line got a little crooked. Um, and the same with this, because this has to go up a ways. Okay. Now, as far as how far it goes, um, that is up to you. But where what I normally do is I gradually taper it down to my inch, which is up here of the, for the strap. Uh, that goes through the D-ring, it has to be tapered. I use a radius. You don't want your radius too close to your um, strap hole because then it'll weaken it. Um, what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to uh, mark out my strap. Um, that way I, don't, I know where to... what I'm aiming for. And it's just an inch wide um, okay, now, then we want to take something, actually that line would probably be adequate. I'm just going to come up there a quarter of an inch, which is not necessarily measured, it's just square, just to give it a little bit more. I'm going to line up my circle with the corner here and with the one inch line, and I'm just going to make a radius. I'll do the same over here. So, I'm going to cut that out now, I think.
Um, next, we just want to establish where our bend is. I just fold it down and look at it and see how it looks. Um, I would say that's about right. So that's where we want our bend. So I square that up again and put our grid lines. And I'm just going to make a, a mark across there. Uh, now, that's our fold line, but one thing that we have to do is, um, is make another. And the reason for that is when you are, um, when you're bending leather, it's not two-dimensional. It has thickness. You have to allow for that bend, and that's what that does. Um, when when you fold the leather, that takes that makes up for the the, the bend. Um, we're not trying to make room for the D ring by doing that. We still have to allow for that, but that gives us that little bit extra uh, to just allow for the bend. Now uh, that's three sixteenth to a quarter. It's not really important. It's just something. So, um, for the D-ring, I normally uh, allow two inches for the D-ring. So, I'm just going to split the difference in between the two lines, okay, and then mark two inches. And then, I should have done that to begin with. But I'm going to mark three quarters of an inch there and three quarters of an inch there. Yeah, that should work. Okay. Um, we'll uh, punch our holes. Trim the length. And there is the back part of our sheath. Uh, yeah, that's the one, that's the other. that. There's the three of pieces of them. Now there is one more piece. I showed it to you, but I don't bother making a pattern for this. It's just the strap. Um, it's three quarters of an inch wide. This is like nine and a half with a hole in the center. That, that's it. That's all it gets. So um, that is the pattern for the SE4 dangler sheath. Oh yes, I, I should have the other piece. Uh, this is the pattern here. I don't make up a new one every time. Um, it's an inch wide, uh, ten and a half inches long, um, and it's basically a piece. The bottom piece folds over the uh, the D ring like that, if you can see, and then the top piece folds over to make room for the belt, and you have two rivets that hold it together. Okay, D ring in here, belt in here. That's all. That's all that is, and um, it's one inch wide. And you know, if you were duplicating it without my exact measurements, you'd have to come up with them yourself. Um, and of course, the this distance depends on what size belt you want to fit in it. I make it for a two inch belt, um, and then of course it'll fit an inch and a half. And this is for the D ring. So with those are the pieces and well the pattern and I'm going to end it off there and I'll come back with the second part where I make the sheath um, thanks for watching uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one